Hey everyone, Lennon here with LFI Digital Marketing, where I show you tips and tricks on digital marketing and ways to make money and not lose money. So in today's video, I'm going to be going, going over Systeem. It's an all-in-one online marketing platform where you can create funnels, email campaigns, newsletters, online courses, even your own affiliate product if you'd like. Now, I did make a previous video um, about an overview slash tutorial on Systeem and how honestly it's better than, you know, having to pay the hefty price of ClickFunnels. This is way cheaper. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to create a landing page within Systeem. So obviously, once you log in, you're at your dashboard, click on Funnels, I'm going to create, I'm going to call this one a test. S2 because I already have a test in here. You'll choose a domain and I'll make another video about how to add your domain to your system account. You choose your funnel goal. So you want to build an audience, you want to sell the product or service, make a custom funnel if you like, run a webinar, choose your currency, things like that. So I'll just go with build an audience, click save. It will appear here. And you click on test two. And in here, here's a basic structure when you're building a funnel or a landing page in here. Here you'll have your steps that they call them. So your first step will be the squeeze page, then a thank you page. And you can always add a step if you'd like. Give it a name. Choose a step type. So they have different categories. They have opt-in, sales, webinar and miscellaneous so with the opt-in you can have a squeeze page inline form one with the pop-up form and obviously the thank you page you have sales you got a sales page an order form a thank you page upsell downsell you got the webinar so you got the webinar registration page webinar thank you page webinar broadcast page yeah mis miscellaneous so you've got like an info page or a contact us page okay so let me exit out of that. So these are your steps. And over here, you'll see these tabs here. So you got your step configuration, which is all the different templates you have when you're building your squeeze page. You can customize. You can also preview them in here before you even pick one. You've got automation rules. Basically, automation rules, which I'll, I'll go over it later. You can do A-B testing. You can check the stats of the page. You can choose a date range. If it's an order form, see if you've made any sales. You can have deadline settings. So let's say you have a product that you're offering and it expires, you know, three days from now. You would choose your funnel step here and you would give it a time when the deadline page should expire. Now, quick note, this goes by military hours. So it wouldn't be, if you want to do two o'clock, like 2 p.m., don't hit, just hit two here. You have to scroll down and choose 14, okay? But yes. Then you have leads, where all your leads will show up once they fill out the form. All right, so let's go back to step configuration. So I wanted to give you this basic layout here. Over here, I will say that the first thing that you'll want to do is you, because this is going to count towards your automation rules of your squeeze page. So you're going to want to go to contacts, okay? So in here, you can go to contacts if you'd like, but definitely go to tags first. Okay, now in here, I'm going to create a tag. Again, I'll do one for test two. Save. Important. Because you have to tag the people that are filling out your form. So you can connect them to the automation rule within your squeeze page. Then emails. You can have a campaign. I'll create a new one. This will be, again, Test two to keep it consistent. You can get it, give it a description if you'd like. 
save that. Click on test two. Then you can create your first email. So give it a subject line. Again, go with the running theme of test two. Go with the visual editor because it's easier. And really, whichever one you, you want to pick is fine. Doesn't matter. So I'll just go with this one and click save. All right. Save successfully. That's great. You can always go back here to look at your campaigns. Click here. Create. Once again, I'm going to do it again. This is a test. Send a name, email, visual editor, selected template. Click save. All right. Then you click on edit. Fantastic. All right. Now something's going on with my network, so I have to refresh the page. So this is all unscripted and live, so mistakes will happen. So if you see nothing pop up after you click save, refresh the page and they will show up for you. Okay, so you've got your email for your squeeze page. You've got your tags for your contacts after they fill out the form. So now let's go back to our test two funnel squeeze page. We're gonna choose the template that we'd like. I'll just go with this one for now. So I'll select this. Okay, you give it a name, change the URL, because you don't want it to be BA ohm B seven nine, whatever it is. So give it a name. Again, just gonna go with test two. Once again, let me save that so that it doesn't forget once I go in to edit it. Save that. Now, here go the automation rules. Now it's active because we chose a template. So you add a rule, funnel step form subscribed. So it happens when a contact had just subscribed to your form after they filled it out. Or you can add another trigger where they visit your page and you want another action to happen. So I'll go with, they filled out the form, great. Now we have to add an action to this rule. So we're gonna to subscribe to the campaign and add a tag. So subscribe to campaign, test two will show up, add another action where we add a tag for them Again, I'm gonna go with the sample of test two, save that rule. So anytime anyone fills out the form in this, they're gonna get subscribed and the tag will be added to them. Okay, so now we can save it, we can look at it, we can edit it, or we can change the template. So let's go into the editing properties. So you can see through here, let's break it down. On the left hand side, you've got your elements that you can choose. You've got blocks that you can put in here. So opt-in forms, features, page footers, a welcome, team presentation, price plans. Up here, you've got settings. You can do the default type, typography for the entire page. The font size, align height, color for links. So this will be the settings for the entire page, not just single things. Go over here. This is where you'll be editing things. It's broken down by section. Then the elements themselves. Be your section, the row, whether it's two column, three column, one column, and then the elements. So again, section, the row, then the elements themselves. This is a row, and here go the elements. So you can click in one thing here, highlight it all. You can make a change in here. Change the font if you'd like, change the color. 
Let's just say for some weird reason, I want to make it yellow. Who knows? You make it bigger, smaller, change the line height if you'd like, give it some space above or below. Change the font. They have website fonts or Google fonts or custom fonts. I'm just going to go with web safe ones because I don't want any glitches happening. Sometimes when you go to like a landing page and it glitches, some people might think there's an error. Like it'll, it'll show one font and then it'll go to the font that, you know, like a Google font, for example. It'll go from this to the Google font. It's real quick and subtle, but I don't like that flashy thing that happens. So I'm just gonna go with, I'll go with Verdana or, let me just go with Arial, just, just to make it easy. You can use Google Fonts if you'd like. This is one of my favorite ones, to be honest. You can mess with the letter spacing of the text. You can give the text a background color, like so. All of these in here, like that. Or just take it out. You've got margin and padding. So you can do all at once or separate all at once or different ones. And your order goes top, right, bottom, left. Same for padding. Change the alignment. This delay before displaying item. So let me show you what this would look like. Uh, I'm going to make it three. Over here, you can save the changes and preview, and that will pop up. See that delay there that happened? Refresh. Let me scroll three seconds until it appears. Boom. So stuff like that. All right, let's go back. So let's just say you want to input a new column here. So again, you got one row, you got two columns, three columns, four columns, or you can add an entirely different section to the page. So your same example, you click, drag it, put it, let's say I want to put something down here. And if you want to edit the section, you can either go to settings right here, that little gear icon, you can duplicate it. You can save it so you can use it again. Let's click on section, margin from the top if you'd like, bottom, left, right, background color, inner background color, background image, all those kinds of things. So let's say I, say I want to make it white, for example, or nothing. Maybe I want to make it green for some reason. I'll do that. Then in here, you got your section, then you add your row. Again, you've got the row, or you've got two column, three column, four column. So click and drag once again. Once you see that line appear, that's where it will drop. Now you got one, two, three columns. You can change the width of one. You can mess around with it. Click and drag, things like that. There you go. And then you can start inputting whatever content you'd like. So you can add text, headline text, a bulleted list, a content box, image, video, audio, a carousel if you want. Add a form, Facebook comments, a survey, a countdown. So let me show you what some of these look like. You've got the countdown like this. You can do a fixed time and date. Have it delay. Do something daily. This is when they would end. So what happens when the countdown expires? You can redirect to another page or just do nothing. The font size for the time. 
for the hours, minutes, seconds. You can choose the same font, change the colors on it. The red was annoying me, so I'm changing it. <laughs> Did not like it at all. I'll just do that for now. Once again, if you want to make edits, you just go here, click on the row, or click within the column, and extend it, shorten it, whatever you'd like. Okay. If you want to add an image, you can go here, drop it to the next column, you click on it, again, make edits here. If you want them to go to another page, open your URL or show a pop-up if you'd like. Go here to upload an image. All the images, you can upload one. If you have images already, you go here. So just select the file, drop it in. So just for this example, I'll go with pick of myself that you've probably seen millions of times. So open that. It can't be more than five megs, unfortunately. So let's see what else I've got. How about me and my kid? That's under five megs. All right. So you select it here, click on insert, and there we are. And if you click on the image, It's responsive to the size of whatever's in the column. So if I want to make it bigger, you have to extend it. Click on that again, and then you can change the size. Okay. All right. Scrolling down. Again, you can click on anything, make a change. Click here, click here. Now, let's say you want to make this three rows instead. Well, what you would have to do Quick tip, you have to select a row, the main one over here. So let me see if I can get to it. This is the one thing that's wonky about it that I do not like. I will admit that, but still cheaper than ClickFunnels. So we go here. One of the things I've done before, go here. I can select it, select that row. I tend to, if I can't exactly select it right away, selected the row, there we go. If I'm having trouble selecting the row for it, I select one of these rows like so, give it a margin to the top and see if that works. So I can select the main row, click on settings. I can duplicate it if I'd like. It's so over here, you can move it up, move it down, duplicate it or save it if you want to use it on repeat. Okay, so that was a pro tip right there. If you can't select the row itself. Just gonna change that out. So what I can do, if I wanna add another row, I will just put this right on top of the current row, like so. Click and drag and drop my other elements in here. Click and drag. And boom, there's that one. Once again. Click and drag, la la la. No, it doesn't look wonderful. Like that, and I could just delete this one. So you would select it, like so. And trash it right here. She won't delete it. Yes, I am very sure. And if you find that you can't scroll up and down and feel stuck, click on an element, anything inside here, like so, and then 
you know you can scroll up and down again okay so that's pretty much a summary of um yeah how to build a line page in here you can save the changes and over here you exit and you can move on to the next step oh and before i forget silly me you can go here to your form that submit button click on that the action you want to send the form or go to the next step so example you got the squeeze page and the thank you page so you will go to the next step or if you just want to send the form and then go to the next step that'll work or it's, it's a custom page that you made elsewhere not sure why that would be happening but okay okay so that's that or you can have them download a file and then you upload the file here so I'm just going to go with send form to the next step, save changes, exit out of this. And if I want to take a look at it, test it out. Here it is. It's beautiful. That appears after three seconds. It's going to do, um, Go click on and if you go to the thank you opt-in page, select your template here. I'm just gonna go with this one for now. Same process. Thanks. Save it. Okay. Go back to my page. Give it a test email. Um Click Submit. And there's the thank you template I got. Okay, so that's just a quick summary of how to make a landing page in Systeme. If you want to check it out, there's going to be a link in the description below to use Systeme. They do have a free version, so you can test it out as much as you'd like. Um, again, better than ClickFunnels. I'll also have... Um, links to the other videos I mentioned, the overview slash tutorial and how it's more affordable and cheaper than ClickFunnels. All right. So I hope this has been helpful. Have a good one.